Hello. There are a lot of flies and mosquitoes where I am now. So yes, I put my mossy net on. It's a bit tight, but. Anyway, we are at the Devil's Marbles. This was a five hour drive south of Daly's Waters and about a four hour drive north of Alice Springs. So I'm not fancying doing a seven hour drive. We want to stop and have a look anyway. We're actually camping here at the National Park campground for the night. Um, and we're just going to do this 4K easy walk around the marbles. Look how beautiful they are. Even through a fly net. Looks like an ugly face. <laughs> Do you see that blue from the side? Yeah. Look how that one's balancing. <laughs> Whoops, watch where I'm going. <laughs> Whoopsie Daisy. <laughs> Look at that one over there, Blue. It's got a straight cut through it. Kalu Kalu, or the Devil's Marbles, is a living cultural landscape and traditional country for the Waramunga, Kaiteti, Alawara, and Walpari people. Kalu Kalu is recognised to be of great cultural importance and become jointly managed between parks and wildlife and the traditional owners in 2009. Almost the entire reserve is a sacred site and many stories and traditions are associated with the area. <clears throat> How the Devil's Marbles Formed The spectacular arrangements of boulders that make up the Devil's Marbles are, in fact, the result of breaking down rather than a building up of rocks. The marbles are remnants from a solid mass of granite, the bulk of which still lies underneath them. Around 17,000 million years ago, molten magma squeezed through ancient sandstones of the Earth's crust and cooled into hard granite rocks, the Devil's Marble Granite. Shrinkage as the granite cooled and pressures within the earth caused right angled patterns of cracks called joints to form. As the overlying rocks were eroded by wind and water, the granite came to be closer to the surface. Groundwater filtered down along the joints and reacted with some of the minerals in the granite to form clay. This process, called weathering, was helped by a warm, humid climate. Weathering was greatest at the corners of the blocks where more surfaces were exposed. Eventually, the overlying rocks were eroded away and the granite was exposed to the elements. The softer weathered granite around the edges of the blocks was washed away, leaving boulders perched on top of one another and strewn along rock platforms. 